Hello, I'm Kevin Kelly, and this is our second experiment with um, Show and Share, where we, um, three of us, are going to either show or share something with each other, and we are inviting you to join us. Um, we don't know what we're actually going to share with each other, so it's going to be a surprise to us as well. Let us know whether this experiment is working and you want to see more. But I'm Kevin Kelly, and then um, there's Camille and Mark, part of our Cool Tools Lab team. So, um, any volunteers to go first? Um, I can go first. Hey, Mark. Okay, so um, by way of explanation, uh, Carla, my wife, and I like to drink uh, coffee quite a bit. And sometimes when we're traveling or on a plane, we can't get espresso, which is our favorite kind of coffee. So what I typically do is I keep a little pack of the Starbucks Via in my wallet. It's a, and it's a Starbucks coffee and it's really good. I only need like a half of a pack and it uh, does the trick. And it's better than like, you know, getting coffee at a McDonald's or Dunkin Donuts or something. But the problem is that Carla requires uh, cream. She won't drink coffee black. So that's been like a problem. So I've come up with a solution that actually works for her. And it's like a multi-part solution. So I'll go through it kind of quickly here. Um, I went on Amazon and I bought a bunch of these capsule toys, first of all, and I'll show you, you probably have seen these before, obviously, they're like little, you know, yeah. whole toys. And so then I also found powdered heavy cream. <laughs> wow. And so it's really like, so what I do is to prepare one of these capsules and then it'll just last a long time is I'll put like a heaping tablespoon uh -huh. of, the, of the cream in there, maybe even a little bit more just to get it up there. And then um, a, I have this, the Starbucks Via capsule right. or packet here and I'll put, they tear easily, which is nice. And then I'll pour approximately half the powder in there. And then we've got this little thing here, good to go. And the, the lid stays on really tight. So then Carla can just keep this in her purse and she has this like emergency coffee <laughs> waiting for her. And then the best thing of all is I found on uh, AliExpress a little tiny four ounce thermos. This is like really small and it holds exactly four ounces of water, hot water, and it stays hot for a few hours. And so now Carla can just keep this in her purse and she's just ready to go. You might ask, well, why doesn't she just like put hot coffee in here? Yeah, that was my it? very first question. <laughs> <laughs> because if you have hot water and cream mixed up for a long time, it starts to taste bad after a little while. Oh. And this way you have it and it yeah. tastes a lot better. Mark, I know this. Can I tell you why I know this? <laughs> yeah. I know this um, having fed children powdered formula from a bottle. You mm -hmm. can't um, mix it up ahead right. of time. So anytime you're leaving the house, you have to bring along just the right amount of powdered <laughs> formula, which usually does not come in, um, at least when I was doing it, did not come in like individual serving uh, pouches mm -hmm. or it wasn't cost effective. Um, and so I would, I had the same kit <laughs> uh, wow. when That's I was so bottle cool. feeding. Um, that's yeah. so cool. So, oh, so yeah. you, you you would think Starbucks in its um, huge variety of coffees they sell, they would offer a, a, a dried version that would have cream in it. Yeah, yeah. like a latte in a bag. Yeah, like a latte, or, or, or I mean, right. they don't they don't offer that. I don't think they do. But anytime you ever find a canned coffee or powdered coffee that has cream in it, it also has sweetener in it. And Carla doesn't oh. want sweetener. This is that's the only way. Like anything, there's very few canned espressos that you can buy that aren't sweetened. But I have found some that are just like black with no sweetener or cream. But if you get one that with cream, they just throw sugar in there as well. Oh, okay. So this so, is so she this likes is the it, combo. Um, coffee, cream, but no mm -hmm. sugar. Okay, yeah. right. And this stuff here is called Hoosier Hills Farm Heavy Cream Powder, and the only ingredient is sweet cream solids uh -huh. and uh the total sugars 
for a tablespoon or just one gram of sugar. So that's right, like right, right. almost nothing. Does that have but to I, be refrigerated? It says store in a cool, dry place, okay. but I'm keeping it in the fridge. Yeah. Why not? Right. Um, but I also found out that you can buy, uh, some, they sell Anthony's, which makes really good like herbs and things. You can get that on Amazon, okay. Anthony's cream. And I think that one might be organic if that's important right. to you. Because I, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I could imagine doing like hot chocolate. Sure. Yeah. And then you could use these capsules and the capsules were inexpensive. And I also would just recommend if you're going to go this way and I'll have links to these, just rinse it out before you use it because there might be like mold uh, release in it or something. Yeah, Who right, knows? Right. Mm -hmm. probably in other not words, it's yet. not made for food grade, but. Right. But I think if you clean it out, it's fine. Right. Right. Well, that's hot really great. Like, I love the hot chocolate. I think, think you should give it a name. It needs a name and, and, and maybe a logo as well, but um, <laughs> exactly at least the name. What, what, what do you call these? Um, uh, well, you know, in, in Japan, the machines are called uh, gachapon. And okay. it's like the it's onomatopoeia. Gacha is the sound of the crank and pon is that the thing is the capsule drop. So maybe something like gotcha, gotcha cafe. Yeah. <laughs> Gotcha Presso, gotcha, gotcha Cafe. Yeah. There you go. And, I, you know, you could use these for anything that's powdered, like mis powdered miso. Uh, tea? Yeah, tea. Anything that you want this, you know, or, or anything dissolvable. Yeah. Um, I would I'd love to see what other uses people could think of for it. Yeah, I like the idea of chai, of doing a version of chai. Yeah, that could be cool. There, we, we, we do have... Um, my niece, while she was in Japan with us, bought the little powdered forms of the um, of that uh, uh, iced tea that you get in the vending machines in in Japan. Oh, neat! It has a very very distinctive mm -hmm. flavor. Yeah, and so and and this powder form has the exact flavor. So um, amazing! That would be uh, another uh, option. Yeah, that's cool. That it's like a, it's like a chai. It's like a milk tea. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mark. That's really yeah, fantastic. Sure. Thank you. sure. So I'll go next. And um, what I've been doing is I, I made this flour press. That's very, very lightweight. A lot of flour presses are usually made out of really heavy wood. This one's made out of foam core with a wood edge mm -hmm. and I put these Velcro straps on them. And so the, they just open up and I can put my botanicals in the blotter paper inside. And I have some cardboard to separate them. And then I can get a pretty good grip with the Velcro and I carry it on my little day pack so I can pick things as I'm going along when we go, we, we when I snip things from the botanical garden and stuff. Um, but it's very, very lightweight. That's the whole, that's the whole point of it is that it's, it's, it goes in the backpack. I don't know how much it weighs, but it's not, not even half a pound. It's really lightweight. And then I take the um, things and I dry them and I have another press that I can transfer them to that is made out of wood and I can put a lot of pressure on it with books if I want to later on, get them really, really flat and dry. Mm -hmm. And then I got this, actually someone gave it to me, but I have a blank book. And then I, and then I just um, mount these samples in this book. Maybe it should stand up. And um, they're all different ways of mounting them um but the way that i'm using is i just super glue them on um they, they look couple, like illustrations i know beautiful. they're really beautiful so it's art and uh, i'll probably at some point go through and try to identify them and make a little label but right now i'm just making them look pretty and um i have i have taken some and just mounted them in a frame mm -hmm. Um, you can do that too, but I like the idea of having this book, um, the specimen book. 
So anyway, um, so that's just this little press and this so pretty. blank book. And there are lots of different ways to mount them. And the old fashioned way was they kind of put these pieces of paper, but I found that I just put some drops of super glue on the mm -hmm. back of them and put them on and they're instantly there. Never Do you leave. use a gel super glue or just the regular? A, a thick one. I, yeah, I, have a, I, uh, yeah. I have a gel super version. Glue the thick one that. Doesn't drip. But it yeah. doesn't take much to, and then you're, no. you know, you're, you're, you're compressing the book. So, yeah. so uh, my goal is to fill this book with um, botanical specimens. And each one is a kind of a little piece of art. Yeah, it really is. Oh, they look beautiful. They it's look lovely. great. And, yeah. and they hold, I, I would have thought that like if you dried out a flower, something would just turn brown and have no, no color they left. dried flowers. Like these are just some rose petals. Um, great. Often retain their, their colors. Mm -hmm. It's really remarkable. Um, that's what makes them really beautiful. I mean, people do a lot with, with flowers, but I'm getting the whole, you know, the whole stem, the whole plant here. I'm interested like in that, that kind of larger botanical yeah. form rather than just the flowers. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, there's, there are some flowers here, but they're really tiny. But the structure of the, this structure itself is really interesting to me. Yeah. I could see how the press would really let you collect yeah. larger um, specimens. And I also wonder if that helps to retain the color um, we pick a lot of things when we're out on hikes but then they go into pockets and by the time we get home right, they're right. creased and damaged. Yeah, so you, could, you could make a smaller version of this too yeah this is just some foam core on the outsides yeah a piece of wood that i glued to prevent it from being dented by the pressure right and then i just took some velcro straps this was a camera strap that i cut up and added velcro to yeah, you yeah. close it in blotter paper, cardboard. Yeah, between. and it's not um, um, bound together. So each of those right. layers just unstacks, right? Okay. Yeah, you could, you could. Yeah, exactly. This whole thing comes apart. You could, you could, you know, you could take it apart. Yeah, and just the tension, just the appropriate tension, yep. is enough to retain the samples. Right, and I'll put a link in. But blotter paper is the thing that you. Um, Put it between because it can get moldy if it if it doesn't absorb mm -hmm. the water okay you want something that will absorb the water from the plant there so you that's go. my share my show and share it's a good one beautiful um i have one that might might follow well at this point these are things you all have made um i have let's see I got this um, little gadget. It's a pom-pom maker. So uh, I made uh, this pom-pom, right? There's, um, we're in, we have all the birthdays happening and um, lots of holidays coming up. So uh, I, every year I like to come up with some different um, embellishment um, for wrappings. Um, so this year I'm doing pom-poms and uh, this pom-pom maker lets you um, kind of, you wrap the yarn around it. So you take this apart and then you kind of like put these back to back and you just like wrap the yarn around and you have two halves that you do like that. Um, and then once you have your two halves all wrapped with yarn, you put them uh, together and then you kind of tie a piece of uh, string around the center. Uh, and then you cut through all the, the loops that you've made around the, the holder, and then you can remove the, the structure. Um, for so show it. me a close up of the pom pom because I didn't really yeah. see. Yeah. So, like yarn? Yeah, I used wool yarn, kind of like a medium weight wool yarn. I'd like to try one with cotton too, but wool is certainly going to be super puffy. And after you cut your loops, you end up with all these like shaggy little ends um, and you just trim those off. And what I discovered 
I have, um, we have a, um, one of our, a member of our household is, um, uh, has hand dominance that's opposite mine. And what I found was that in using, right, so when you're cutting the pom-pom, you're not really looking at like this side, you're more, what you see is more on the other side. So if you use scissors that have opposite hand dominance, <laughs> you're kind of in a better position to be looking at the outside of what's being cut, if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, the thing is really the pom-pom maker. Um, and I'm gonna be making these for like the next month. Cool. I love it. How long does it take to make one? Um, I did that one probably in 20 minutes, something okay. on that order of magnitude, but the scissors I was using to trim through, um, I should have had one in progress, but you're, you're supposed to loop the yarn around this little half moon, like 120 mm -hmm. times they recommend. Mm -hmm. And then you're doing two of those. So you have that number of loops to then cut through. Um, and if you've got dull scissors, it's, <laughs> How about, time. how about haircut clippers for sh oh you mean like a buzzer like yeah. a, like a beard trimmer or something yeah a little that's buzzer. a really good idea <laughs> yeah, that's a try. A, i imagine that would definitely work on the wool i don't know how a beard trimmer would work on um like cotton but yeah, i don't think i'd use it on cotton but it might yeah. work on the wool which is yeah kind yeah of i will try that next <laughs> and then you can use that to also right give it, give it a, its that's little cool. shave at the end yeah yeah that's cool it would make a good uh Christmas tree ornament too. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you all. Um, that's our show and share for today, our cool tools. And again, um, give us some comments and let us know um, if you'd like to see some more. So thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.